Hello and welcome to this video about condition monitoring. I will explain what this can bring to you and to your company. But before telling you what it can bring for you, I will show you what it brought for our own company. I have an example here from our own production factory of electronics in Denmark. Here we have electronics production with a production line including an oven, a soldering oven which produces a lot of heat. This process needs always fresh air. If the fresh air supply stops, in short time the entire production will stop and we can no longer produce our products. The air is provided by a ventilation installation. There is a fan driven by an electric motor. There are many things that can go wrong with a ventilation installation. For example, the motor can get damaged, then the fan stops. Or there can be some mechanical problem and the entire fan starts to vibrate and at some point it will stop. Or, for example, the air filters can get clogged, then again you don't run the installation efficiently. There are many ways to deal with the maintenance of such installation. One way is to do corrective maintenance. That means if the installation stops, it has a failure, then you send a maintenance technician to fix it. The disadvantage of this is that you have downtime, the production is stopped while the maintenance technician is fixing this. The other way of addressing this problem and trying to avoid downtime is preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance means that you have a schedule, a time schedule and Every number of run hours, you will send a technician to check if everything is okay. This is not always sufficient because you can either under-maintain, that means the degradation is more than you want it to be, or you can over-maintain, that means you are fixing something which is not broken. A more efficient way to do this is condition-based maintenance. As the name says, condition-based maintenance is based on the actual condition of the equipment. That means you are monitoring the condition of the equipment and then you trigger a maintenance process once you detect a degradation. This is easier said than done because condition-based maintenance can be expensive. Using condition-based maintenance, it's always a balance between, on one hand, the cost of the condition monitoring equipment and the other hand, the benefit of it. That means the cost of downtime, the cost incurred by a production stop. This means that you often have dedicated condition monitoring systems for the very critical equipment. The disruption we make here is that we do condition monitoring within the drive. The variable speed drive, it's already in the installation. It measures the motor, it measures the load, it has a lot of information from sensors. And there are also other external sensors which can be connected. Everything is processed in the drive and this is what we call edge computing. That means there is no computation done in a cloud or on some remote server. It is all done locally in the drive. Condition monitoring with drives is not supposed to compete with dedicated condition monitoring systems. No, critical applications already have the systems, but using, taking advantage of the data in the drive makes possible to make condition monitoring at a fraction of the cost of a dedicated system. That means Condition monitoring in a drive enables you to do condition monitoring where it earlier was not feasible because the cost was too high. So taking advantage of the drive already in the application using the processing in the drive, that means edge computing, gives you the possibility to do condition monitoring at the fraction of the cost of a dedicated system. There are many things you can do with a drive, many faults you can detect. In this ventilation installation, the drive can monitor the winding of the motor. 
It can also monitor a change in the load, for example, that occurs because of dirty air filters. It can also detect a change in vibration if something gets loose here. But the drive can also be used to detect other things in other applications. It can, for example, detect bearing faults using a dedicated sensor. As something new this year, a drive can be used to detect cavitation in a pump that pumps liquid, water, or some other kind of liquid, and detecting cavitation is done without a sensor. When the drive detects a fault, it can notify the user so that a maintenance technician can be sent to the installation and fix the problem. But the drive can also do something by itself about the fault, depending what it is. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a wastewater pump. If you get some dirt in the wastewater and the pump gets clogged and cannot turn anymore, then there is a function called deragging. Deragging means the pump will run shortly in the other direction, forth and back, and by doing that it cleans the dirt which is in the pump and clogging the pump and then it will free the pump which can then resume normal operation. There are many benefits for condition-based maintenance. You can avoid unexpected production stops, you reduce downtime, you can optimize the number of spare parts and the machines will also run more efficiently. How does condition monitoring work using a drive? It works in three steps. First, you need a baseline. You need to establish what is the normal level, where is the installation or how is the application performing before the degradation. This can be done in different ways. The drive will do the measurements and learn a baseline curve. You can either run the application through a predefined speed range and make a so-called baseline run, then the baseline will be established immediately, or you can let the drive just run the application normally and the drive will learn the baseline while the application is running. The second step is to set the thresholds. Thresholds are the limits above which the user needs to get notified about the degradation. The thresholds can be generated automatically using default values, but if you know the application and your technician knows all the details about the application, then you can also change these settings and adjust the threshold based on experience. Of course, experience is necessary Condition monitoring using the drive is a tool in the hands of maintenance technicians. It is not a replacement of maintenance technicians. The third step is the actual monitoring. That means during operation, the drive will monitor the different parameters. And then if one of the values exceeds a threshold, the user will be notified. How can the user be notified about exceeding a threshold? There are different ways of doing that. Some are very easy, like turning off and on a lamp or a semaphore with different colors, like yellow, it means an early warning, orange means something more urgent, and red means that you are already in uh, the stage of functional failure. Another way to get this information is through the display of the drive. The most common way of getting that information is to read the data out of the drive through field bus communication and then condition monitoring can be an integral part of the automation system. So the PLC controlling the process will get always this information. And last but certainly not least, is using a cloud to visualize condition monitoring. A cloud, again, is not needed for condition monitoring, but can be used for visualization, for showing graphically 
what is going on with the installation. And the advantage of using a cloud is that you can also log the data so you can see how the fault evolved in time, how the degradation went in time, and you can see these things then on a dashboard. Let me demonstrate you condition monitoring on the drive in practice. I will use a model of the ventilation installation where I can simulate different kinds of faults. Come, join me, and I will show you how to set it up and how it is running. So what do we have here? Here we have a model of our ventilation installation in the production. It is all reduced to scale and we can simulate different kind of faults which can also occur in the real installation. We have a motor. In the motor we can make a turn-to-turn -turn fault and when we do that we simulate an early winding fault. Then we have a fan that uh, blows air out this way and then at the fan we can change the airflow, we can open and close and by doing that we simulate a change in the flow, for example a clogged air filter. We also have a possibility to create a misalignment by using this handle. When I push on this handle the motor will become misaligned with a fan and this will increase the vibration level and by doing that I simulate a mechanical fault. So let's see how it works. First I will turn on the drive. Motor starts turning. Air is coming out. So I will start now to simulate a fault in the motor winding. I simulate now a turn-to-turn -turn fault. Meanwhile on my PC you can see a graphical representation of the thresholds and the actual value is shown like this uh, green cross. I can see I'm running 1050 rotations per minute, 1050 RPM, and now I create a turn-to-turn -turn fault. The fault is increasing, and you can see on this lamp it turned orange. That means I have a warning signal. On the display of the drive, I also got a warning telling me that there is a winding fault. When I remove the fault, everything turns back to normal and the green light is active again, showing that everything is okay. The next fault I'm going to demonstrate is the load fault. It's also called a load envelope. It is called an envelope because it has both upper and lower thresholds. That means we can detect a variation both upwards when the motor is running more heavy, it needs to provide more torque, or downwards when the load is uh, decreased. We can simulate this fault with a damper. I will here close for the airflow, not fully, only reduce the airflow, and then you will see on the screen how the green cross changes its position, and then will trigger a load warning. So I'm reducing, the airflow, you can see the green cross is moving and the lamp is active and also we get a message in the display of the drive. Now I close even more and then the display will go to the second warning level, the orange level. I open the airflow Everything is normal again, so we are again in a green condition. The next fault is vibration monitoring. This is the only fault which requires an external sensor, and the sensor is connected to the analog input of the drive. I am going to use this handle to create a misalignment between motor and fan, and this will then increase the vibration which is measured by this sensor. So I push down the handle, misalignment is created and you can see on the screen the vibration level increased and then the yellow light turns on, gives us the warning. The warning is also visible in the display of the drive. 
vibration monitoring, it's very relevant in a variable speed application because you can monitor the vibration level at different speeds. If you run variable speed, you can have mechanical resonances and these can be taken into consideration. The integration of the condition monitoring in an automation system is quite easy. All faults are represented in the status word of the drive. Let me show you what I mean. I create a fault and then you can see that the warning bit turns 1 and that means that a PLC or an automation system can detect the warning and then you can notify the user through the automation system. And this is only one of the ways of notifying the user or bringing the information from CBM to the user. Now I will set up CBM on the drive. You will see it is quite easy. It is very intuitive because you have a plugin in the MCT10 software. The plugin allows you to run the baseline. The baseline can be run either through a sweep at once or during normal operation like online baseline. The second step will be then to edit the threshold and the last step is to demonstrate you how monitoring works. I will now set up a baseline. It is quite easy. You have two possibilities, either a baseline run, like I will do now, or you can also set up an online baseline. That means the baseline is generated during the normal operation. So for the baseline run, I will need to determine what is the speed range. I set 500 to 1500 RPM. That is the speed range where this fan will be operating. Once I have set this up, I will see graphically the 20 speed points where the baseline is represented. So the entire baseline is represented as 20 points. And I can select the duration of the baseline, anything between one minute and two hours. The question is how long time should I run the baseline? It depends. This is a small fan, one minute is enough. If I had a bigger installation, something heavier with more inertia, then I will need a longer time, two to four minutes, maybe even 10 minutes. Two hours is rather the exception. It's only special situations when it's necessary. The next step is to tell the drive where are the external sensors connected. I have here one vibration sensor. So I will set up the vibration sensor on analog input 53 and I need to set up the sensor units. In this case I have a vibration sensor and the units are millimeter per second. If I was in a place like in North America where inches are used instead of millimeters I would set inch per second. Also, other types of sensors are possible acceleration sensors, which are scaled in G. Or you can have pressure sensor for water in bar or for air in Pascal and so on. So let's choose millimeter per second for my sensor here. Then we set the scaling of the current input and the Units are 0 to 25 because the range of the sensor is 25 millimeter per second. All this information is written on the sensor and the drive needs to be programmed with these values because it cannot know what are the characteristics of the sensor we are connecting. This is all the information you need to provide. Now we are ready to create the baseline. So I click on create the baseline and the drive is now ready to run the baseline. I only need to push hand on. And the drive is now running through the 20 speed points and learns the value, the baseline value in each of these 20 points. Now we are done. The drive has sweep through the speed range and I push OK. And the baseline is now stored in the memory of the drive, everything on the edge. I can visualize the values and I can judge if 
I want to change the thresholds, else I can leave the default values. I can see here the values for the stator, for the load, and for my vibration sensor. In case I want to make some adjustments, I have this possibility. I can adjust here the reaction time, how fast should the system react to a value, to a monitored value which exceeds a threshold. Then I can also adjust the distance between the threshold and the baseline. In most application default values are okay, we can go with to the next step. If you have more experience, you can make all these adjustments. So the system is flexible. Once you have configured everything and you are happy with the results, you can generate the thresholds either for one specific function or for all functions. Once you have generated the thresholds, you can go to the next step, monitoring. You can always come back and edit a threshold and you can also edit an individual point. Let's see. Suppose you have a resonance or another condition where you want to manually adjust the baseline, you can just edit a value and put a new value in and then the threshold will change. It's all in your hands. The easiest way to set up condition monitoring on the drive is to use the so-called Easy CBM. Easy CBM is a part of the smart start functionality. This means when you start up the drive the very first time, you will be asked if you want to run CBM or not. Let me show you how this dialog looks like. You don't need any computer to do this. Everything is on the drive. The smart start dialog shows up when you power the drive for the first time, but you can also access it through the quick menu. First, you configure the drive as you normally would configure the drive. That means you select the language, you select your motor type, and then you select the power of the motor, the voltage of the motor, motor current, motor frequency, that, will, that means the normal motor type plate data. Then you set up the speed range where the application will run and you set up the RAM times to start and stop the motor. You can also choose the application. If it's in our case, it's a fan. You can also choose other types of application. Then very important, you are asked about the automatic energy optimization function and it's recommended also to run an automatic motor adaptation. This will then detect the motor parameters. So once all these settings, which you normally do for the drives are done, you are asked an additional question. If you want condition-based maintenance or not, you can here choose yes, and then you will be asked about the threshold generation. You just go further and you will be then asked about the three functions. Do you want to activate vibration? If you want to activate vibration, then you get the information from the drive, very useful, that 4 to 20 milliamp sensors are supported. And that's such a sensor which we have connected to the drive in our case. You can select the number of sensors to configure from one up to four sensors. You select the input of the sensor. In our case, we use analog input 53. And then the next question is if you want to have winding monitoring, just answer yes. And the next question and last one is if you want to activate load envelope, you select yes again and you can have an extension, extended factor. The extended factor means a scaling how close or how far you want the threshold from the baseline. Just leave the default value 
and the next question is about the duration of the online recording and that means that in, when you use smart start and easy cbm then the baseline will be generated online and you have to tell the drive how long is the learning period in this case we have two weeks that means the drive will learn the normal values will generate the baseline at the end of the two weeks during normal operation and after that it will automatically generate a threshold and it will start the monitoring phase. Once this is done the CBM is now configured. You are ready to go. That's all. CBM is now configured. It's easy, isn't it? Okay, thanks for watching this practical demonstration. If you found this video informative, please subscribe. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below and don't forget to hit the like button if you found the content valuable. Thanks again for watching.